In 2016, when Elon Musk showed off his brainchild starship as well as his dream of multi-planetary life to the world, this really caused a fierce debate in the space community with an overwhelming number of people attacking Musk. Most of those come from the politicians. Starship is a joke, will never fly, they said. Not only because they did not trust Musk, but most of all they feared that the development of a private space company could turn the tables, usurping the monopoly of the legacy companies from which they benefit. And finally, that nightmare has come true. Starship is now so famous while the successor agency's space launch system turned out to be a literal joke. So, how has SpaceX used the reverse card in the political game? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. In 2020, while SpaceX was quietly testing Starship prototypes in low-altitude test flights, someone shared that Starship is a joke from the material selection to the construction principle to the aerodynamic shape for re-entry. Not to mention third-world-style assembly of hardware literally on a beach. Building a flyback booster stage is one thing. Building a manned reusable re-entry vehicle is a few leagues above Elon Musk and probably above SpaceX as well. Looks like an investor marketing exercise to me, intended to generally boost the stock value of Elon Musk's other operations using New Horizons and disruptive innovation clout. When reading these words out of the blue, I imagine Blue Origin's case. For over two decades, Jeff Bezos's firm has not made any revenue as far as I know, so theoretically, he suffered heavy losses. But it's so surprising that in 2024, Amazon founder surpassed tech guru Elon Musk to return to the top place in the Bloomberg Billionaires Index with a $200 billion net worth. Oh my God, do you know what I mean? However, unlike Jeff, Elon is really serious with his Starship program. It explains why instead of becoming a dreamy rocket like New Glenn, Starship actually went into real life. This vehicle has taken off the ground three times and has been preparing for more flights in the near-term future. Its potential is also demonstrated by a file of high-quality customers that it owns, including the tycoons and government agencies. The Mega Rocket's attraction lies in extremely modern and advanced technologies that we have never seen before. Ironically, they are something that was previously poo-pooed a joke. What makes Starship so special? The first one is about the material selection. The rocket body is generally made of aerospace-grade aluminum or titanium, as both metals are strong and also lightweight, with some additional parts being made out of carbon composites. Carbon composites may be promising in the future as they are very lightweight yet strong materials. For that reason, when SpaceX selected the stainless steel for Starship's hull, people felt weird. Critics argued that stainless steel was relatively heavy compared to carbon composites commonly used in aerospace applications. To be honest, choosing the right material for a rocket's hull is indeed crucial, as it needs to withstand extreme conditions during launch, flight, and re-entry. Here are some factors to consider when selecting materials for rocket hulls. The material must be strong enough to withstand the structural stresses during launch and flight, as well as potential impacts from debris or micrometeoroids. Rockets need to be as lightweight as possible to maximize payload capacity. Therefore, Materials with high strength to weight ratios are preferred. The material must be able to handle extreme temperatures experienced during launch, atmospheric re-entry, and in space. The hull material should have smooth surfaces to minimize aerodynamic drag during flight. The material must be cost-effective as rocket construction can be prohibitively expensive. Access to the material and ease of fabrication are also important considerations. Starship is being made out of steel, specifically a combination of 301 and 304L stainless steel. Although more expensive, stainless steel can withstand higher temperatures compared to aluminum, which is advantageous for components subjected to extreme heat during rocket propulsion. Compared to titanium, stainless steel is easier to fabricate and weld compared to titanium. This can result in reduced manufacturing complexity and costs. In terms of cost, steel is also much cheaper than carbon. In 2019, Elon Musk explained that SpaceX was spending close to $200 per kilogram of carbon fiber compared to the $3 per kilogram they paid for steel. This switch to steel has allowed SpaceX to prototype and iterate at a rapid pace that they wouldn't have been able to do if they were still using carbon composites. However, the Raptor engine is much more insane. 
It's the rare type of rocket engine running on a full flow stage combustion cycle and is the first one to be successful at it. A full flow stage combustion engine refers to how a pump spins a turbine to drive the engine, using what's called a pre-burner to get this process going by injecting a small amount of fuel. Normally, some of the propellant is expended in a traditional open cycle engine to start this process, but Raptor will use every drop of propellant available, making it one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. Raptor burns that fuel at a high enough pressure that can then steer the fire from pre-burner back into the combustion chamber and completely burn that propellant with the rest of the propellant, says space consultant Charlie Garcia from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. And it does this in a very clever way that only the Russians have done previously by putting all the propellant in the engine through the pre-burners. As a result, Raptor has a much higher pressure than Merlin, about three times greater, making it the highest pressure rocket engine in existence and leading to its aforementioned larger thrust than Merlin despite its similar size. Another advantage of Raptor is the use of liquid oxygen and methane, which is something largely unprecedented in the rocket industry or even very high flying rockets. Methalox requires a bit better metal alloys that were only available until recently, and that is why the a sudden heavy interest in it. Methane in and of itself isn't optimal for atmospheric or above atmosphere range, but can prevent a buildup of deposits in the engine compared to other fuels like kerosene, a process known as coking, while its higher performance allows for lower costs. The cost of propellant for liquid rockets is such a trivial proportion of the total launch costs, says space consultant Rand Simberg. With reusable vehicles, we want to get to the point at which we care what the propellant costs. In airlines, typically 35% of the total operating costs is fuel. With a rocket, it's less than 1% traditionally. Additionally, according to Elon Musk's vision of Mars colonization, methane can be produced there. This provides the optimization of cost and convenience. The final one is about the latest advanced technology in orbit refueling. Under the requirement of NASA's Artemis III to ferry astronauts to the lunar surface, SpaceX first has to master how to refuel a starship in low Earth orbit after it has already blasted off the planet. The tricky concept is known as cryogenic propellant transfer, something never done before in microgravity. By completing the transfer of cryogenic fuel between internal tanks in Flight 3, it can be said that SpaceX is on the threshold of mastering this technology. Once upon a time, even before SLS was born, NASA was interested in developing refueling technology in space. Unfortunately, when Congress directed the agency to build a large rocket based upon Space Shuttle-era technology called the Space Launch System, they also quietly put on the back burner its work. The reason for this is rumored that funding for NASA's efforts to develop so-called propellant depots and the capability to store and transfer cryogenic rocket fuels in orbit was considered a threat to the existence of SLS program. The SLS contractors did not like this, and thus, we have a vehicle that is costing $2 billion a year to develop. Fortunately, the emergence of the Starship project is truly a lifeboat for NASA's unfinished dream in the past. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.